Okay, please, uh, Mr. Patterson, make your comments. Uh, am I unmuted? You can hear me? can hear you. Okay, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The freeholder board, Bruce Patterson Garwood. Uh, I, I sent in some comments, but I'll, I'll read them, of course. Uh, first, I'll speak to the general uh, comment section. Uh, we are reading about so many missteps and wrong actions with the vote by mail process this election cycle, and not necessarily are they considered fraud, but not only in this county, but also nationwide. Uh, for the public, some questions have arisen that need to be answered by the county clerk's department or whoever can answer them. Uh, question one, how can you tell if a ballot came from a deceased person? Two, what happens to all those ballots that are returned undeliverable? And three, what is that yellow sheet of paper that came with some ballots that requests some form of ID to be returned with the ballot? And what would happen if that person who received that actually decides to vote by provisional? So, I mean, these questions really need to be answered for the public. Uh, continuing in the resolutions. Uh, resolution 728, uh, this is giving Mount Olive Baptist Church $17,000 for two months to provide warming stations for the homeless for the Code Blue program. Uh, just a simple question is why is Mount Olive actually singled out uh, in the resolution for Code Blue monies when you normally do a resolution for a grand total to all the charitable venues for Code Blue? Uh, resolution 735, this involves open space monies awarded to nine towns for the amount of nearly $1.5 million. However, it mentions that the scopes are being changed. It's confusing that the scopes can be changed in the middle of a grant, which sounds like it is now in violation of the grant covenant. What happens to the original work? What happened to the original work? And what actually is the new work for these nine towns? Uh, this is usually explained in the original big check presentations and the now nine town scopes should be done again here in front of the public so we understand where the money's going to. Uh, also, is this still matching these grant monies? Uh, resolution 739, it's adding $150,000 to the original nearly $6 million for year two of the Union County Division of Aging. Uh, it just seems strange that a small amount is being added at the end of the year, and it's a nice round number. Just need an explanation who and what this money is going for. Uh, resolution 746, this is giving Wiener Law Group, which is ex-Senator Lesniak's recent uh, law firm that he recently retired from, $15,000 for guidance on potential shared service agreement. Well, why do we have to go to an outside politically connected council when we have around 50 to 80 experienced in-house lawyers to guide us in our legal department along along with wasting 350000 to suddenly pay for two top legal executives as patronage. These actions apparently make our county legal department look suspect, uh, I can consider it called corrupted. These, please, appealing to your sense of integrity, vote no on this rezo, put this back in-house, and get rid of also the duplication of legal executives immediately. This would save the taxpayers $190,000 in one year. Uh, Rezo 747, giving Kaloji Simmets uh, $10,000 to defend charges uh, against the county for Fannie Cartagena. Uh, just for the public, can you give us an overview of what the legal case is? Uh, Resolution 752. This is recognizing Scotch Plains for the Columbus Day celebration, uh, which is great. Uh, we would like to thank Joseph Sarno of Scotch Plains who is also a Union County Freeholder Republican candidate for taking it on himself to save the Columbus statue in front of his town hall by organizing a petition, a march, plus speeches to have the Scotch Plains governing body save it despite outside pressures. I look forward to his youthful energies on the freeholder dais once he is voted in. And then you also mentioned there's a new resolution that suddenly came up for $1.8 million for Snyder Park. Uh, you know, that just seems wrong that you suddenly stick a resolution for that much money uh, to be voted on with nobody from the public even being aware of it or even maybe the freeholders. So why is it so suddenly uh, important to put on this uh, agenda? 
And also, I do agree with Mr. Mirabella, 30% contingency is just plain wrong. I've been in construction this long. 30% contingency, no way. 5%, 10% maybe. That 400000 should be reduced to maybe 100000 150000 So thanks very much. Look forward to the answers. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Patterson. We'll take a, this a little bit at a time. I'm going to ask Director Anderson to um, speak a little bit more, although I thought your answer was very good in the first meeting on the code blue and then maybe 739 to director sure through you chairman um so for the code blue the warming centers are unique it's not a standard as we have done in the past this is a, this is a um something that we've added on to this um new code blue season for 2020. warming centers are non-sleeping locations it's somewhere for someone to go in and stay warm and because there's no dedicated shelter in um, plainfield we research a lot of community faith-based organizations that would have the capacity to assist the county in serving this population so that's why it's a separate award and um, it's specific for warming centers and we needed to start November 1st is our date to get started before the weather really gets cold and we can't serve the population. Um, resolution 739 is actually good news for the county. $150,000 is coming in from the federal government um, for the Division on Aging. And it's to really serve um, our population of over 60 that would used to go to the congregate sites and get their socialization or meeting. So we are putting together a pop-up grab and go at those um, locations. And that $150,000 is actually for that program from the federal government and it's through CARES Act um, in addition to their area plan. So thank you. Great, thank you, Director, I appreciate that. Um, let's go to uh, Administrator Drake and see if she can um, discuss just on a very high level about scope changes and why they're necessary. Um, yes, thank you, Chairman. Through you, uh, this resolution is allowing municipalities to request request changes of scope to grants that were previously awarded. They are matching grants as were the original, and because they were awarded specifically by project through resolution, they have to also be canceled and then reawarded by resolution. No new monies are being used for these awards, and municipalities have 24 months to complete. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, County Council, uh, I uh, heard one valid question it was really about uh, just a high level synopsis on 747. If you can provide that as best you can, that will be helpful. Yes, Mr. Chairman, through you, this is actually an automobile accident that took place uh, at five points in Union. Uh, the county is not directly involved in any way in the accident but because uh, a county road runs through that intersection, we were named in the lawsuit. So this is just to, uh, to defend that action. Thank you. All right, very good. Thank you, County Council. Uh, the last comment on Snyder Park, uh, due to the short week this week, and um, you know, there's not gonna be uh, another meeting uh, for a little while uh, until uh, November. Uh, I thought it was important we were able to uh, pull all the information together and sometimes we add items to the agenda that makes sense uh, on the day of the uh, meeting so that's my explanation for why we have added snyder park okay mr clerk are there anybody else that's registered that wishes to